Hi guys, long time no see. This is our new vlog on Navi CS2 YouTube channel. We are here in Barcelona and this is our first bootcamp in the new CS2 era. Uh, so today I'll show you a little bit of uh, our bootcamp. Uh, we will uh, speak to Alexi and uh, hopefully show you something interesting. So yeah, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video and write something in comments and enjoy. Now we're at the boot camp with the captain, Alexi. How are we doing today? We're doing good. We're doing good. Enjoying Barcelona? Yes. Have you been it's here nice. before? I have actually. Yes, I was 18 when I was here. And yes. you are now 26? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, Barcelona is beautiful. Our boot camp is almost ready. Um, let's talk about CS a little bit. So we've been uh, experiencing CS2 for about a month already, right? Mm -hmm. What's your honest opinion now? I don't think it comes as a surprise if I say that uh, I don't think it's the most successful release ever, but uh, I'm sure they're aware of it in a way that they also said that it's good to force it and start fixing. I do think that there are major flaws still needing to be fixed and I really just hope that they will get fixed uh, by the major. Aside from that, that's just something you gotta live with and it was 10 years of CSGO, now it's something new so we need to be ready. So yeah, let's stay positive and let's name, in your opinion, three best innovations in CS2 that uh, we have now. I've started to get used to the smokes and the mechanics with the smokes and the utility overall. So I mean it's a uh, kind of like a good change because it's um, it's a major change but it doesn't shift the mechanics mm -hmm. uh, of like you're moving or whatever so it still feels like CS but it's something completely different and in a way it also speeds up the pace of the game there are pros and cons but I do like that there is something uh, that feels completely new so maybe I'll get a better view in the future but yeah visuals mm -hmm. are nice some maps more than others, I think. They uh, focused on some maps more than the others, so maybe the others will get fixed uh, later. People were uh, scared that these visuals, that mm -hmm. brighter colors mm -hmm. might uh, uh, might be a problem, might uh, you know be a problem for your eyes, for example. They, they will be getting tired quicker. Uh, what do you think? I think you just need to adjust with the settings. Uh, you definitely, or at least for me, I cannot play with the same um, settings I had in CSGO. Mm -hmm. It's way too bright and way too much, so I needed to shift a bit and maybe I'll, I'll still change um, to make it perfect. Uh, number three. You need to help me here. I don't know. We will think about third one. Maybe yeah. until the next tournament we will find the third, the, the third uh, positive thing about CS2, but uh, glad that uh, Valve, they're working on it, so we're going somewhere, definitely. Uh, did your uh, practicing routine change with the CS2? Not too much, to be honest. I think the biggest change is the fact that the games are quicker. We don't need to pack all the... Um, fixing all the mistakes to the end of the day, because we will have more time in between some games. We can maybe fix it straight away or something mm -hmm. like that. After this bootcamp, I will know better, because it's the first bootcamp we have now in CS2. And we might be trying out something new, might be trying something that we already did. And after this bootcamp, I will have a way better answer. Mm -hmm. But as of right now, not, nothing major. Uh, do you think you'll have to practice more individually uh, with the CS2? Yeah, I for sure think so. Every one of us feels that like, they know that everybody else is grinding. And you also have the feeling that you might not be comfortable with all your positions or, or your angles or whatever you're doing in the game. So I do think that uh, you just need to grind the game and just feel the game in order to be comfortable. So yes, a lot of grinding ahead. So uh, after Sydney, um, maybe we can talk about MR12 mm -hmm. system. What do you think about it? Can you name it as a third good innovation, for example, or not? <laughs> Viewer perspective, maybe. Uh, I think a lot of people might like it, that the games are shorter. I do think that it 
is exhausting to play MR15, best of threes, especially best of fives. Uh, best of three, if they are like um, tight games, mm -hmm. it will take a long while. But at the end of the day, you kind of appreciated the fact that you played this game for a long, long, long time. That all the small, small margins matter. Current economy and the pistol, uh, pistol rounds. And overall, just the fact that it's way too fast paced and it's way harder to make a comeback. Mm -hmm. And overall, it just creates a lot more randomness. And for me, uh, in a comp competitive mindset and like being a perfectionist, even though you would be facing a better opponent that uh, would benefit you having MR12 and maybe like surprising them even easier. I think still for me, MR15 takes the cake if you want to show everything there is from your deep playbook and whatever, but it is a big change and it is something I need to get used to. And overall, I'm not saying it's bad, it's just when I compare to two right now, I mm -hmm. still prefer MR15, but maybe in the future I'll change my mind. The CS scene is now shaking. You can barely name a one tier one team without changes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's a fact. And uh, everyone's now uh, talking about the super team Falcons are uh, making this roster. Everyone has, I don't know, maybe when the vlog will be out, they will already have some kind of announcement, but uh, do you believe in this um, idea of a super team of five best players in the world working good? No, I do not think. I do think that it's a really smart choice of getting uh, the best coach, arguably, and getting like a leader aside him or someone that can work and build a team. You could potentially make a team with five superstars, is if they all fit their roles, mm -hmm. and you think that the mindset is kind of the same and you won't have big clashes, or maybe if you have, you think that they are persons or there are people in the management that can figure it out. But I do not think that you can just name five players on the paper and put them together with no good management or no good coach or whatever, and make it work like that. I don't think that's the case. And I don't think we've ever really seen it work either yes and but but we we've seen a lot of tries like phase wanted to do this g2 wanted to do this in the mm -hmm. past like a lot of teams but uh, it never ended up like they thought that it yes. would right i mean for sure like it's no doubt that they will be good because yes. they're still amazing players if you would do that but just they're thinking about like creating an era or creating a team that cannot be beaten or mm -hmm. all, all, all th these things and I think what I just previously said mattered, matters the most and how the team actually functions together. Yeah, we'll I'm gonna see. I'm gonna say a no, but I think they're heading to a good direction getting Sonic and um, He will figure it out. Yes. He knows how to uh, I don't I think he knows how to deal with the, the players with ego, right? You could say so. Yeah. Uh, so do you think this all these changes uh, only because we uh, the game changed, like because of CS2 or it's uh, just another crisis that we sometimes witness and plus we we won't uh, have major for quite a long time this is like a perfect timing for orcs to create something new why do you think we uh, witnessing everything right now like that it is definitely because of the uh, game change uh, you would think that when CSGO was still out you have seasons you have uh, like after Christmas break after summer break and how the league start and everything and it's really hard to get players from teams in the middle of the season overall to create something um, out of nowhere and making it work. But I think just the fact that everybody is mentally still getting ready for the new game, a lot of updates are coming. So everybody is jumping to another team maybe a bit easier because mm -hmm. they know a lot, lot of things are happening. And the other thing is that even though it is kind of the middle of the season, it's still, uh, there's still a while till the major and everybody knows that even though you might not play on the next tournament, the game is still so fresh and the game is still so new that you will not get, uh, you can still climb back. You can easily get to where other people are, even though you will take a small break and just yeah. grind the game. You have a right uh, uh, for a mistake, right? Mm -hmm. Have uh, some time. Uh, we also had some changes, as you might know. <laughs> so, what do you think about Wonderful? What do you think about Igor as a person? You played with him for a little bit. Like, your mm -hmm. first impression of uh, that player? 
I think he really impressed me in, in terms of how he is. I didn't know too much. I saw him on a couple tournaments. I don't think we even said hi to each other. We just like, you know, walked past or whatever. So I have seen him, but not talked to him at all. But he's a really solid guy. He seems happy. He's smiling a lot. He's really down to earth. I've spoke with him on the travel day. We were the first two who arrived. Mm. So we were just ordering food, talking to each other about a bunch of stuff. So I just think that uh, he's really easy going and easy to work with. And um, we played a couple practice um, practice days before coming here, just like feeling the game and feeling each other. And now we're gonna have a long boot camp and we're gonna get to know each other better. So I think it's gonna be nice. Okay, I wish you all the luck in the world. We'll see each other in Copenhagen Thank in the you. first tournament. I'm so excited, so nervous, but I think it's gonna be all right. I, be all I right. agree with you, Wonderful has such a nice energy. I think it yes. might work. <laughs> all right, thank you so much for Thank you. Chicken. Chicken with uh, broccoli. Tomato. It smells nice. It smells very nice. Shall we go? <laughs> Shall we go? Yes, totally synchronized. <laughs> hey everyone, it's Jill here and uh, it's time to talk about some CS2 settings. So, number one thing is launch options. Okay, so first of all, if you're a streamer, you put in allow third-party software. In that case, your screen doesn't go black and you can stream the game. It's very important for me because after my long career, you know what I'm turning to. Okay, and First of all, we we'll type in no vid uh, to make the launch process of CSGO quite smoother. There's gonna be no video playing. It will fasten your process by like seven seconds. So that's number one. Number two. Launch option number two. If you have an exec that you want to run every single time without typing it into your console, plus exec and whatever exec is named, most likely it's gonna be auto exec. You put it in and it's gonna work. All there's left is to launch CSGO. For me, probably one of the most important things is Crosshair. You have to go in game, Crosshair, and uh, CSGO has made a, sorry, CS2 has made a really nice uh, application here. Uh, you can optimize it without using any console commands, which I do because I'm a new player. And uh, my number one go-to Crosshair would be uh, Style of Force, so it's not moving, classic, static. Uh, friendly fire reticle warning, if you're a new player, it's nice to have it on, so you don't mix mistake your teammates or enemies. But uh, for pro, pro players, you have it off. Follow recoil, no, because that's it's hard to play around with, don't do it. Center dot, yes. And what you want, length, you will have it at 1.5, that's what I like. Thickness, you're gonna leave it at 0 0.7. And gap, you're gonna add gap, yes, no, yes, no. Yes, this is the gap. These are the right settings, 1.4, 0.3, 2.8. No outline because you're not an old boomer. And the crosser has to be blue, like this. It's a must have to have alpha 255 because that's how your crosser gets the most depth to it. If you see, if I put it a bit lower, it starts to fade. This is not good in CS2, you want it to have it the highest possible. And all those options down below, leave them at, leave them at default. No one uses them. And the last thing is video settings. For me, I like to play 4x3, so that's stretched. I like to use 1280 by 960 and of course the highest, re oi. You use full screen, never window, never full screen window. So once you're done with that, you're gonna go to advanced video settings. And this is where it gets co complicated because a lot of it is personal preference, but some of them are not. So boost player contrast, it's a player preference. It takes a lot of your FPS and you have, if you have no problems with your eyesight, I see no reason to have it enabled. So you click disabled and the uh, vertical sync disabled because Nvidia graphic, if you have an Nvidia graphics card, you can do it in Nvidia settings. Don't use it for CSGO and in general, you wanted to have it disabled because the more FPS, the better. Values preset custom and 
Uh, me personally, I like Forex MSA. I like my graphics a little higher than the average pro player. Shadow quality, you have to have it at very high. You know why? Because there's a lot of advantages you can get in CS2 where you don't see the opponent, but you see shadow. And then you have time to react and your opponent has no chance. Model texture detail, high as well, because you don't want to look at a at the enemy and he's all blurry, you know, you want the high detail. Also provides your skin a better look. Texture filter, filtering mode, I go for anisotropic 8x. Uh, I'd go for 16x, but I don't know what's the difference between those two, so I choose the 8x. Shader detail, have it high and particle detail very high. This helps with uh, seeing through Molotovs. It used to help with uh, smoke fading in CSGO, but that's not a thing anymore because it's equal for everyone now. So have it uh, shader detail high, particle detail very high it's gonna be a better vision for you through Molotovs. And small tip, the closer you are to the Molotov, the better you see. Ambient occlusion, I have no idea what it is. Disable, you don't want anything you don't want. And high dynamic range, I'd go for performance because FPS is important and the high dynamic range doesn't change much. It just changes a little, a little of your colors, just performance. And fidelity affects super resolution, highest quality. I have no idea why. But it works like this. And NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, enable. Don't do enable plus boost because it's, it's not good. So yeah, that's all you have it, boys. My CS2 settings, crosshair, video settings, launch options, and get down to play. Perfect. Hey everyone, it's Ime here. Let's talk about my CSGO settings. CS2. CS2. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> Why are you laughing? How does a young player find his settings in CS? If he wants to find his own settings, he needs to play a lot. For example, myself, whenever I was at the beginning, I, I took someone's settings, I think it was uh, forest or something, and then I I changed it a bit time to time, and then I created my own, my own settings. And I think that's what you can do easily. For example, you can take a config, you're gonna change your probably crosshair, you're gonna change your sensitivity, and then just try. Because if you don't try, you cannot find your own settings. It all comes down to personal preference and uh, incorporating uh, how the game feels. Sometimes you like how it looks, but it doesn't feel as well. So try to look into settings more. It's an important part of your game and uh, just try to set what feels best for you. And also you can use Google to see if these settings affect your performance, input lag and so on. Just pick them out very carefully. But of course, it's up to you and not to the general public's opinion. So yeah. How long did it take you to find your ideal CSGO back then, config? And what was the hardest thing to get right? The hardest thing to get right would probably be a declarity of the game. Because sometimes you feel that lower graphics, it feels way, way smoother, lower input lag, the hatches feel crispier. But high details just look a lot better for me. I choose to go for them because I like how it looks. When I feel like the game looks better, I get more involved into it. I get into, into the rhythm. So yeah, uh, that's probably the hardest part, to choose between low settings or high settings. And how long did it take uh, you to find your ideal CSGO config? And uh, what was the hardest thing in this? I don't think it took long, because like, I'm not a guy who's, gonna, who's changing a lot of settings. I know like a lot of people they are changing sensitivity most of the times. Crosshair doesn't matter, but sensitivity is like hard to, to change because like then you have you need time to use to it. So you don't usually experiment with crosshair sensitivity and other. I mean, I change my crosshair like I have two or three crosshairs that it's not that much. It's like between size three, size two, size four, and then sensitivity I go like I change it very regularly, and then when I change it, I change it from I have two point three, I change it for example two thirty five or two twenty five. So like very small percentage, it's just. Just to have some exchange. Sensitivity, I don't experiment. I take it uh, very serious because sensitivity is essentially your muscle memory and you cannot train it for a year. Uh, change it and then be like, ah, oh, I play better. It's going to be a placebo effect because your brain focuses on your aim. If you want to change your sensitivity, do it for a good reason. That crosshair, I think you can change whenever you want. It doesn't really change much. It just changes the appearance of the game, but not your muscle memory or how the game feels. It just changes how the game feels to you. Going into CS2, did you change your config and game settings? In CS2, I changed a lot of settings because it looks way different in CSGO. CS2, I think, is 
is run on a better engine. Uh, I think it requires more detail now because sometimes it has struggles. Your PCs struggle to adapt to the new CS2 settings. So I think you have to work on them carefully and uh, choose what works best for you. Uh, I think the, the only thing that I changed, it was uh, the shadow thing because I was playing with medium, now I'm playing with very high. And then yeah, most of them this, I'm, I'm not sure I changed something else, to be honest. Ambient occlusion is the most debatable parameter. Some say that it is useless, the other half say that it should be set to minimum medium. What do you think? I have it on disable. Like I said, I'm using my CSGO settings. I didn't want to change a lot. The only thing that I changed it was the shadow thing. And then that's it. Like I, I think I have it on disabled at home and the game feels good. If I ever feel if the game doesn't feel right or I don't like it anymore, I might play with the settings a little bit to refresh the the muscle memory or just re refresh the receptors in your brain but right now I, I just have it on disabled and yeah. Does removing the net graph and CL clear decals commands affect the game process? I don't think it doesn't. I think it affects how do you perceive the game. I mean I don't even play with net graph in CS2 anymore because I feel it's bulky, it's not nice, it just gets into, gets into your way. I think if something's off with the game you already notice, then you can turn on net graph to see what's actually wrong. But I know some people focus on that graph. Oh, I have 200 FPS, but my monitor is 240 Hz and it gets into their head and they don't have a clear mind to play the game. So I just have it off and just focus on the game. In CSGO, I was playing Netgraph only. I have lineups with Netgraph. Maybe, I mean, obviously this is not going to be the same lineups with Netgraph, but still like, I cannot play with if I don't have my Netgraph down here. It's, it's, it's so weird for me. And then click the calls as well. Like I had my click the calls on, uh, on Inspect. And then whenever I was inspecting, it was clearly the call for me, and it was like I got used to play like so many years. But I think it, for clear the calls is okayish because like now you cannot see like the blood like like in CS:GO. Now you can see clearly. For example, in CS:GO, if you kill one guy in the same place and then there's one more guy coming, you, you can barely see him at uh, some parts of the map. And now it's you can see it clearly, and then yeah, I think it's good. I think clear the calls is important, but. Uh... I don't understand why people bind it to like W or A, any movement key, because I feel it's a crucial part of information. For example, you have the op, and you shoot through the wall, and uh, you step to the right, you delete the blood. You don't know if you hit him or not, but if you have it uh, binded on a button that you don't use often, like inspect key or any other key that you don't really use to move in game, I think you can find a lot of information, and after you find the information, you can clear the decal and uh, not let the blood obstruct your vision. And you can find my actual, authentic, real, one-to-one, -one, the most original config ever on Navi Backforce. And uh, you can follow the link in the description down below. You can find out, find out my config down uh, below in the description on uh, Backforce uh, Navi, and I forgot. You can find it down below in the description at uh, Backforce Navi. Wow, how I forget it again. That's it guys, that is my config in CS2, you can find it out in the description at uh, Navi Backforce uh, website.